this is a quick walkthrough of using National Instruments Multisim and the NIMI DAC in order to characterize the frequency response of an RC circuit. So the first thing you need to do is open up NI Multisim. And we need to create a new project. So we go File New. That is an NI MyDAC design. If we double click on that, it will create our new design. And what it does is it populates it with the hardware that the NI MyDAC contains. So you've got up the top here the digital multimeter, and on the side here, you've got the outputs from the side. Just going to move the ground node that it pre populates with it up a bit so we can see it. Okay, so these are all the pins that are on the side of the MIMI deck, and what we want to do is first put in place our circuit. So if we simply right click and choose place component, then we can select the components that we're after. Here we're after a basic resistor. There we go, so we select resistor, and a 1K resistor is perfect for that, so we go OK, and we pop in a resistor somewhere there. And then what we'd also like is a capacitor, which should be here somewhere, and the capacitor that we want to use is 100 nanofarads, so if we type 100 in in here, and go OK, and insert that here somewhere and close that and I like to rotate it around so we get the sort of kind of circuit we like to show you in certain diagrams okay to join everything up then what we need to do we also I'll put in a ground you can get your components from up on this toolbar as well if we choose power sources you'll find that there's a ground component we can stick that down here. Of course what this means is that whatever you connect to here is also connected here. If the component with these buttons here you get multiple place if you want to get out of there hit escape and it will pull you back and close. To wire components together if we move the cursor until we see this little symbol and then we left click and then we move to where we want to join it to and then left click again we'll join the two together similarly here. Now in order to provide an input to the circuit we're going to use the analog output zero. It's important to use zero because if we're going to use the frequency response analyzer or the Bode plot analyzer it by default outputs on output zero. In order to characterize the circuit we're going to need to measure the input so we're going to use the analog input zero and we attach the positive side to where we're inputting to the circuit. And we're going to use analog input positive side 1. So this device has two analog inputs, 1 and 0, to the output of the circuit. Because when we measure a voltage, we're always measuring between a point here and some other point. In this case, we want to measure between here and ground, or here and ground. Then we need to define where that is. So what we're going to do is hook all of these inputs up to the analog ground. So what that means now is that we're measuring the input voltage between here and here, which is attached to ground. Similarly for the input one. And it's also important to make sure that the analog ground here is hooked up. Um, you don't need to hook the analog ground here up because this ground here and this ground here is the same. But if you want to hook them up, that's no problem. So we've now created our circuit what we'd like to do is now simulate the circuit to see what its simulated response is going to be. In order to do that, we're going to make use of the function generator. So that's going to provide our output on A0 here. You can see at the moment it has a cross, and if we go over it, it says it's disabled. What we want to do is right click on that and simply select enable it here. So it's now enabled. You'll see the cross goes away. 
And then to visualize what happens, we're going to use the Bode plot analyzer. So if I double click on this icon here, which is the Bode plot, it opens up my Bode plot analyzer. And I'm going to set my start frequency, the frequency at which I start sending a sinusoid into the signal, into the system at 10 hertz. And I'm going to set my stop frequency to the maximum that this will let you, which is 20 kilohertz. Um, and initially, I just want to do a simulation. So down here, I make sure I'm on simulation. So then what I can do is push the run arrow up here in multi-system to start the simulation. And you'll see the system. We now see the frequency response. It continues to simulate. So we just hit stop at that point here once we've got the full frequency response. And as expected, this is a low pass filter. So you see it falling off and it has a 3 dB point somewhere around a kilohertz as we'd expect or a bit higher for the circuit here. What we also see here, of course, is the phase response. So you see that initially the output, there is a zero phase layer between the input and the output. And as we attenuate the signal, we end up going all the way to a 90 degree phase lag between the two. So that's how we simulate the system. If we then had built the circuit for real, which I have already done, and we had the NIDAC attached to the system, what we could then do is go and select the actual NIDAC. And rather than doing a simulation, which we were doing back up here, we could actually run it and test it on the real system. And you'll see that if we do that, so you can see the points now appearing, and you can see the response is pretty good. If I was to change the circuit slightly and put in a different resistor into the circuit, like so, so now I've doubled the resistance. If we run that again, just to show that we are actually measuring a rail circuit, you can see that the frequency response has actually changed. And in fact, in this particular circuit, I've now changed the resistance to two kilo ohms. So what I could do is go back here, is close this window here, go back here. If I double click on the value here, I can edit it. So I can now make that two kilo ohms. Okay, I can open up my Bode plot again, and then I can rerun my change it back to simulation and rerun the simulation and now you can see we're back to matching. So I hope that's got will get you started with using the simulation capabilities of multisim combined with the actual MyDAC to measure and compare a real piece of hardware.